What's up, Mobile Legends community? The name is Shiva and code is my squad. Welcome to my first official guide video. Cutting straight to the chase, Kagura's passive, Yin Yang Gathering. This passive allows Kagura to generate a shield based on her magic power and stuns nearby enemies, triggering only once every 4.5 seconds. Seimei Umbrella Open! This is her first active. Purple and blue are the same. They all do damage. This is her main source of damage. Wherever she throws her umbrella, deals damage to enemies and slows them down. Next up, we have her second active in blue mode. This is Rasho Umbrella Flea. With same A Umbrella, it removes debuffs. Kagura moves towards the direction and leaves the umbrella behind. So, basically, it's like a purify. So, if you have any kind of negative effect, you just use this and teleport away. Rasho Umbrella Flea, purple mode. What this does is it lets you teleport to your umbrella no matter how far it is, as long as it's away from you. If your passive is ready, it will also trigger when you teleport to it. Next up, we have the blue ultimate, Yin Yang Overturn. This pushes enemies back and deals magic damage. Right after, we have the purple ultimate, which is what you've probably seen a lot of Kaguras use most of the time. This generates the lasers from her umbrella and... Uh, if the enemies don't escape the lasers, they'll be pushed back into the umbrella. Story. Omyoji Master is a master of yin-yang arts driven by powerful spirits, yin and yang. The Kagura family is the oldest and most powerful of the Omyoji, but the most powerful of all being the ancestor master. Kagura, as one of the Omyoji family with the most potential, had been given the Seimei umbrella an heirloom of yin yang arts passed down through generations. Legend has it that the umbrella had been refined by the great Seimei himself, using power by the great, excuse me, using power from a hundred ghosts and now possesses life and a wisdom of its own, only controllable by its rightful owner. After learning that her childhood playmate Hayabusa had headed to the Land of Dawn to undertake a dangerous mission, Kagura secretly took the Seimei umbrella and followed in Hayabusa's step, hoping to be able to help him in battle. Hence, Kagura x Hayabusa. Hashtag rip Hanabi fans. <laughs> so, I personally started off with the third Kag build, because it has a lot of cooldown. And then I moved on to my first Kag build, which has a little bit less cooldown. And I finally ended up uh, with the second Kag build, only trading out concentrated energy for magic gem if possible or if needed. Um, it's very rare that it's needed, and most of the time, concentrated energy gives you more sustain, which is better. And, as an FYI, um, Kagura has a decent learning curve. She's not super hard to master, but she is difficult to, you know, control uh, in certain situations. It's all about timing for her. If you get the timing down, she's easy to use. If you don't get the timing down, she's going to be really difficult for you to learn. Now, going straight into the actual tutorial, I'm going to show you a couple of things. That Tendril of Light, that's her range, and when it dis when it thins out and disappears, it's going to cast her passive, and her passive is beautiful. And um, it's just I'm just going to show you the damage it does, you know, her first active at max level with the uh, decent items. And the damage is 1280, 108, and 225, so keep in mind you do a lot of damage with that first hit. Now... That passive will trigger this negative effect, it's a stun, and that's the duration right there, that's the duration bar, how long it's going to take to disappear, for the enemy to move. And here's the range of the umbrella flip, and when you teleport back it still does damage, as well as your ultimate, even if it's not close by, it does the same amount of damage as if it's close by. Now I'm going to get rid of this mark from Gudgeon, and basically any other negative effect or mark will disappear from you if you use your second active. Um, the blue one. 
it acts like a really, basically like a purify on a really low cooldown. And if we look at the push from the ultimate, the blue one, you'll see that it, they get pushed to the outer edge of that ring. Now her purple ultimate, I'm going to let Gudgeon escape so you can see. Pay attention to the umbrella's position and the distance from the umbrella to the brush. That's about the range of umbrella of the umbrella's purple laser thing. So make sure you have this in mind when you're trying to kill enemies. Keep it close to them at all times. You can prod enemy brush for Natalia's and other hidden enemies that might try to gank you. So keep that in mind when you're trying to gank or trying to not to get ganked. And I'm going to show you an example. Act like we didn't see him. He's going to try to ambush and surprise us. But that flip basically nullifies his teleportation skills. And that really, really, really tricks the Gudgeon because they're expecting to teleport before they use their second active. Welcome to the intermediate level. If you got here, it means you already know the basics. So... Let me go ahead and um, tell you, this is a lot of stuff, and the advanced will just show you even more stuff. So here we go. The intermediate level, you're going to make sure that when you start the game in high ELO matches, you go to check those brushes before you do anything else, because you might be ganked at level 1. So pay attention to those brushes at all times when you're farming. And only in extremely rare cases where there's a fanny on your team will you let them keep that top buff. Otherwise, that top buff is yours. And I'm going to bully this Angela using my level 4 damage tactics. And what I mean by that is, see I already used it but it's on cooldown. And she's not retreating to her base, which is a bad idea for her. I'm just going to wait for my passive, or excuse me, my active, my ultimate to go on cooldown. And I, I have approximately 5 seconds left on my ultimate. So I'm just going to wait for that and then destroy her. She has flicker as a battle spell so that might come in handy for her. Alright, here we go, we're in, and she flickers away from my per excuse me, my blue ultimate, but I finish her off with another umbrella cast. And Johnson and Moscow are on the way to try to kill me and finish me off, since I'm low on health and mana. And Hellkurt helps me out a lot with his ultimate, since they can't really see where I'm at. I'm going to try to recall, but Johnson is going to try to find me. They're both on the lookout for me. All I have to do is simply teleport and, and then um, use my umbrella open to run away. What follows through is a kind of a fail of a team fight. My ultimate went back on cooldown, but um, they don't realize that I have very low mana, so I can't really cast skills. I tell them to retreat. Speaking of retreating, you need to know your damage limits, who you can dab on, basically. Like Carrie in this case, I'm just going to completely destroy her because she has no sustain, no durability to pose a challenge to me. And Johnson is going to die too because he was too late to save Carrie. Now, bullying the squishies. I'm gonna follow this carry. She's in my field of vision, and then she goes to that brush. It's just the end for her. This is a bad idea to do, but make sure you bully enemies you can bully. Now, reaching behind the tanks is something I'm about to show you with Moskov. Johnson's gonna try to defend him, but there's pressure from the bottom from Hylos and Hellkurt, and that means I can prod this Moskov and kill him right under Johnson's nose. And we're gonna kill Johnson as well because he has no, no damage. Now, initiating team fights. If you do initiate a team fight, make sure you hit the squishies or the damage dealers as much as possible. And make sure that your tank goes in for the kill right after. Now, Hellkurt is going to help me finish off this carry. Argus escapes um, due to flicker. But now Johnson is going to come in and it's going to bring me to my next point, which is um, peeling. You can peel really well with Kagura, and it really helps your team out because they can't really get close to, to your allies. Right now, Moskov is on his way to kill, and so is Johnson and Argus and Angela. They're all going to go try to kill my people, but I completely destroy Angela since she's the squishiest one, followed by Moskov. But unfortunately, Moskov runs away, and I'm concerned about saving my teammates, so I let him go, and they don't push anymore. Now you can expose enemies that are trying to just hide out, waiting for an opportunity, by just shooting them. You, now in this case, you can initiate a team fight just due to that fact that they think you're alone. And your team, if they're good and they have map awareness, will finish off those kills for you. This was a 1 for 2 deal, excuse me, 1 for 3 deal. 
Hellcurt died, but three of them died. They have no more damage. Which, all throughout the video, I've been keeping um, something in mind, which is positioning. And that just comes with experience. Make sure you go in at the right time and you have enough health left for um, the ability to tower dive for enemies and finish off um, the team fights. Welcome to the advanced level. If you got here, it's because you already know how to use Kagura pretty well. But I'm pretty sure you're not using that passive to your maximum potential. Um, make sure you always use this passive as often as possible so that you can abuse these monsters and get a really, really, um, basically a health advantage over your enemies. Now, here's uh, one of the bigger tips, zoning. If you want to make sure you don't get ganked, you got to make sure you're always checking the map and running around the area to make sure there's enemies not within range before you clear a lane. Otherwise, you're just going to get ganked and destroyed. So keep that in mind. When you get level 4, you're, o you're ready to overplay the enemy. In this case, this is uh, one of the Kagura's counters, Hellkurt, due to the silence, uh, making you not be able to cast skills. Hellcurt tries to escape at this point, but all I have to do is finish him off with an umbrella hit. And this actually baits Gusion, since I'm low on health, he's gonna try to kill me now. This is called baiting, FYI. I already mentioned it, but just making sure. Gusion right here is um has a couple of mistakes, and the biggest mistake is that he didn't teleport right about here. And because of that, I flipped away, purifying his mark and not allowing him to dive and kill me, which is awesome. Now, because now he has to come back in, and that just gives me enough time for my ultimate to go on cooldown and kill him. I'm going to showcase another fight, um, but before I'm going to show you how to prevent farm loss. Farm loss is when people are trying to sh uh, steal your farm and you can actually destroy them. Make sure you're aiming for your actual jungle monster first, then the enemies. And if you're chasing, make sure you don't get ganked like this. If you do, make sure you have that um, umbrella flip handy. Don't use it to chase enemies. Always use it for escapes. That is the biggest difference between a pro Kagura and a decent Kagura. You use it for escapes. That umbrella open is used for escapes. Now, excuse me for the little bit of buggy appearance, but it's just I went from 3 speed to 1 speed in this Hellkurt fight. And um, he tries to kill me, but um, unfortunately um, that stun from my passive helps me out too much. And at this point I'm going to show you like an endgame battle. Everybody has their potion and their buff, and everybody's maxed out. So, in this case I'm going to show you why it's so difficult to fight one of the top 2 assassins right now. Guzzin with the damage and Hellkurt with the silences and the damage so just keep in mind it's going to be really difficult to win i'm actually going to die here but i last more than basically 30 seconds which is more than enough time for somebody to realize that i'm being targeted and it allows for help to come by to come and kind of do like a pincer attack on them but because i'm alone and this is just a test fight they're going to win since they have way more damage and more power over positioning than i do that was it guys thank you for watching once again, the name is Shiva and code is my squad.